Well, good morning, Homestead family. It's time for me to get started on the irrigation for our garden complex. It's a massive job. That's a lot to do. Luckily, I already have a deep well already on the property I'm going to tie into. So stick with me right after the break. We're going to talk about what's ahead of us. Be right back. <music> This video covers irrigation, mains, installation for our garden. Well, welcome back. And here's the pump house that uh, houses the uh, deep well that serves our house and the south end of our property. I want to utilize this well by tying into the discharge line of this, of this, uh, the whole pump system here, and I'm going to run off to the north end of our property and serve it. I'm in hopes that I have enough PSI and GPM out of this existing system to serve the north end. I think I do because I'm centrally located here with the pump, so I'm right in the middle of the property and it has really no problem at all serving the south end, so it shouldn't have any trouble serving the north end. It's the same distance out here on the north end. It may be a little bit longer due to the runs going off to the east, but um, I think that I got enough PSI. I'm at 68 PSI and I got about 60 GPM out of this so that's pretty good you know for uh, a well really good actually so I'm gonna run off my uh, uh, existing well and try to serve the complex now if I don't I'm gonna go ahead and put the whole system in and test it out and make sure I'm getting the coverage that I want to get and if I don't have it, if I'm not getting enough pressure and enough water volume to serve the heads that I want to serve, then I'm going to have to add a booster pump out here on the end of the, uh, you know, near the garden. So I'm not going to do that right up front. I'm going to see what I got before I spend all that money on a booster pump and come to find out I didn't really even need it. So do your homework before you go out and buy all this stuff. We're getting ready to start our irrigation and I just wanted to walk you through what I'm doing on our property um, to try to, you know, be a little frugal. Irrigation can get real expensive real quick, so I'm going to have to do this myself rather than try to farm it out and get an irrigation company in here to do it. So my little brother, he's going to drive over from Jacksonville and he's going to spend a couple days with me and he's, he's going to help me. Bless his heart. He's such a good boy. But... Um, He's got some irrigation experience. I've got some irrigation experience. Between the two of us, we ought to be able to do this job really ourselves with no problem. But let me give you a few pointers. So if you're thinking about doing this for yourself, uh, maybe you want to do the same thing we're doing. First thing you want to do is diagram out your... Um, area that you're going to be irrigating and what that does for you is it helps you to create a good estimate of material because you're, you're guessing at how many parts and pieces you're going to need and I go through it very carefully and try to figure out how many feet of pipe we'll head over to the I got um, all my pipes staged over at the burn pit so we'll go over and take a look at the of the pipe that I had to buy for this job and you'll see it's quite a lot of pipe that but if I was just guessing at it I could end up spending twice as much on pipe than I really need. So if I go out and lay out my system and measure it and put out irrigation flags everywhere I want to put a head and I can run pretty much where I'm going to run my mains, then I can measure it and I can get um, lengths of pipe and I can add all that up, you know, and I know how much pipe to get. So we'll, we'll head over there after we get through here and take a look at it. Um, I also go through the system and I figure out how many um, elbows and T's and couplings and all that. That right there in itself is a guess, an estimate, but it's an educated guess because we had, an, we had a diagram here so I can pretty much get within 20% plus or minus 20% of how many parts I need. And when you go to buy the parts, I, you know, you can see getting them in a by the box or individually pieces I would recommend buying them by the box that way you have a few extra because you, you know you're going to end up using more than you think so get a little more on the plus side when you're buying your parts and we'll go outside into the shop and um, 
take a look at you know all the parts that I had to buy and I'm still not through I still get some are still on order on the way here but it takes a lot so anyway I drew out the system uh, let me walk you through I don't know if you can see this so I'm gonna move the camera up kind of close and show you the layout of the system and then we'll head out to the garden complex and we'll walk through this and you know kind of show you physically where it's going to go so come on up and let's see if we can get a better view of what I did here well, this is my uh, rough sketch of my diagram of the uh, system. I don't think there's any way I'm going to be able to show this to you on the camera. It's just, it's just too big of a sketch and it's drawn in a thin pen. So it's not really bold and it's not going to be picked up by the camera very well. But what this does is if you do the same concept, lay out your system on a big piece of paper and draw every one of your heads where they all go and how you plan to get there with your mains then you can go out and set your flags out to where all those points are that you're going to be routing pipe to and you can put a measurement on there and you can count up those measurements at the end and you can estimate and determine how many feet of pipe you're going to be needing for your system before you do any digging at all with your trencher, always call your local electric company and they will come out and mark your underground cables, uh, electrical cables, so you don't inadvertently run over them things. You don't want to do that. So they don't mind doing it, so give them a call and they'll hook you up so you know where this stuff is and it really doesn't cost you anything to do that. That's absolutely a free service. It's included with your um, electrical bill. So. Get them guys out there to market before you start digging. Well, this is a table full of uh, fittings that I've, I've gotten so far for the uh, for the project. I still have a whole bunch of them on order that are coming in uh, online. I went to an irrigation supply company and bought a lot of this, you know, wholesale. So that saved me some money too. Uh, some of the parts they didn't have, like the Sininger heads. I'm using a Sininger. 5123 PC impact sprinkler head, which is a high volume head and gives a lot of good uh, volume of water. And I had to order those special. So I got those off my Amazon account. Uh, if you want to order those heads, it's on our Amazon store link, you know, at the end of our, um, at the back of our channel, you can check that out. But they're a great head. So I got those coming and I've got these parts so far. And uh, my brother will be here in a couple of weeks and we'll be working on this together. So uh, it's quite a job ahead of us. So let's take a walk out to the uh, burn pit and I'll show you the amount of pipe that I've got, uh, you know, estimated and purchased to uh, get started on our trenches and putting in our mains. So let's head over to the burn pit. Well, here we are out by the burn pit. This is all the, the piping that we've got staged, ready to put out in the trenches. So we got a little over 3,000 feet of pipe, two inch, one and a half inch, all the way down to half inch. So we got quite a job ahead of us. So let's take a walk around and look at some of the areas I was talking about, uh, you know, over in the shop about um, which areas are we gonna actually irrigate. So quite a big job, so let's get to it. This is the first stop when we leave the pump house, which is right over there. We're going to start right there at the pump house and come right down this road with our first trench. And we're going to uh, drop off a, uh, a riser right here to serve this area right here. This is uh, Nancy's hydrangeas. The deer have completely decimated her hydrangeas. So if I put me a, um, uh, a riser right here with a hose bib and a sprinkler so I can irrigate this area, and I can also put one of our motion detector deer deterrents out here to squirt them little rascals. Maybe we can save Nancy a few hydrangeas. So this will be our first, uh, our first surface service with the irrigation will come off right here to serve this area for Nancy. Trench will go right by this area and continue right on out to the garden complex, which is another 300 feet out there. So let's take a look at that. Right here is where the main the trench for the, the first water main is going to come right down through this area right here. And I'm going to come up to this road up here and tee off. And I'm going to serve 
this is our future watermelon patch over here. And over here is gonna be where I build an enclosure for Nancy's blueberries and her strawberries. So we're gonna have some uh, service over there, water service over there to serve those areas. And I'm gonna put up some uh, vertical stanchions out here out of fence posts and put up my uh, Sinninger 5123 PC heads. We'll be putting those out there to serve that watermelon patch. And as we come up to the road here, we're gonna run the main down the entire road and serve the, um, the, the fruit orchard. We have uh, five trees in now. I'm gonna put an additional five trees in uh, next fall, this coming fall. So that'll give us a total of 10 trees out here on what we call the North Orchard. So we're gonna be able to run a, a line to serve all of these and we'll have two valves to run, run one to the east all at one time, then irrigate the one to the uh, west all at one time, five on each, each branch line. That way we can, uh, I can turn one valve water all the trees at one time, turn it off, turn the other valve on, and water all the other trees at one time. That saves me a lot of trouble of dragging hoses and you know, and, and flooding the, uh, the basin with the trees in it. So let me show you, take a look at uh, you know, the watermelon patch and the uh, blueberries and strawberries and the North Orchard. This, this right here is the future home of our watermelons. It's uh, 50 feet wide and about 100 feet 125 feet long. This is going to be where we um, grow the watermelons and also cantaloupes and any other kind of melon we want to grow that we're going to allow to be ground cover without a trellis. So that's that area. This area that you see right here with the orange marking tape, I've marked it off. This is the spot that we're going to put in our uh, blueberries and our raised beds for Nancy's strawberries. I'm gonna eventually build an enclosure that totally encloses these berries to keep the birds and the squirrels out in it. So it's got a lot of work ahead of it, but the first thing I don't wanna do is at least get the service over there and I'll, I'll put the riser in there and cap it off and come back later and do what I need to do. And this right here is the future home of our, what we call the North Orchard. It's nothing but a 300 foot long, a, a single, line of fruit trees and um, these things are going to be irrigated all at one time. I've got five trees in now and next fall this is the area that I was talking about I was going to put five more trees so I want to be able to irrigate five at a time by just simply turning a valve. If I can open one valve and get them all five of them watered at once that saves me a lot of trouble. Two valves, two strings of trees, five at a time. This is the little road that goes around the, um, the little fruit trees. I'm going to come right straight down this road with our main and trench right down the middle of that road so I can serve off to the, to the left there to the watermelon patch, the strawberries and blueberries, and then to the right we'll get the fruit trees. I don't know if you can see it, but right over there is the little road that goes down to the orchard. And we're going to be bringing the main right through there, right across the road right there. And then we're going to come way over here to the um, to this little road right here that goes to our harvest area. Because I need to get out down. I'm going to run down this road right here, down over to our wash table and our process vegetable processing station over there that's our harvest area and over there I got um, a wash table and a processing table with a sink so they both need water so a water source out there so this is an area I'm going to be uh, running a pipe out to to serve that area this is a large turf area that when we first in was nothing but a stump field and uh, Nancy was wanting to use this as an area to put picnic tables so when we have our outdoor kitchen over here we could just simply walk from the outdoor kitchen and come out here and eat and uh, enjoy the prettiness of the property. But since we got the turf in, she says, I don't think I want to put any of them tables out there. I just want to look out my back windows and look at just a nice beautiful turf area. So that's the way we're going to leave it. So. Um, we're going to put some irrigation out here. I'm going to irrigate the four corners and possibly put one in the middle. It's quite a large area. So uh, we seeded this with uh, Bahia grass uh, when we first moved in. It's taken root pretty good. It just needs to have some irrigation on it. So we're going to uh, irrigate this area as one of our turf areas and purtify the place. So let's get started on that one. Well, here we are where um, we're at the other end of the, the little uh, single line orchard out here that uh, I'm going to have the trench to come right down this road 
and come right across here and shoot over there to the uh, harvest area. At the same time, I'm gonna tee off right here and I'm gonna run all the way to the end of this road right here and I'm gonna branch off to the right to serve um, the earth garden. I'm gonna branch off to the left to serve the container garden and I'm gonna eventually run all the way down around the, the earth garden and serve the trellis area and also going to cut across the road up here and serve the, uh, uh, the raised bed garden so there's a lot out here that's going to be served that's coming off of this main that's running down this main road right here this large area that you see right here this is the future home of all of our raised beds and planter boxes there's going to be Dozens of those they go all the way down this whole field from here all the way down to the end. That's about 400 feet down there. So it's about a hundred feet wide 400 feet long and I'm gonna have um, Sinninger heads out there risers that'll sprinkle that entire area and I, I won't be able to do all of that at one time But I can do do it in zones just simply by opening a few valves and um, Doing whatever GPM is gonna let me do however many GPMs I can squirt at one time. So there's the plan for the uh, raised bed area. This area right here is our um, container garden. Over here is Nancy's big uh, enclosure for her, um, for the salad bar. This is all of our lettuces and things like that, her herbs. So this is her herb table. We're gonna get some water supply over here to serve this area here. And then all these tables that you see all the way down, I'm going to have um, two uh, hose stations uh, located, centrally located in here, so I can swing a, a hose and come by and water these, because remember, I, I hand water all of my containers. On the other side, you can see another long string of container tables. That's where I grow potatoes and uh, other things in five-gallon buckets, so there's going to be two more water supplies out there. Um, you know, with the hose stations that I can stretch out the hose and hand water. So this is all hand watered. So all I need is some um, hose stations out here and I can just use one at a time as I'm watering. This is part of my chores. In the morning, they'll come out here to water all these by hand, which really don't take that long, as long as I don't have to drag hoses very far. If I have hose stations located, you know, um, uh, throughout the complex where they're easy to get to, you know, and strategically pointed at a strategic point, I can just swing the hose back and forth and get what I need to water and roll the hose back up and move to the next one. So this is the uh, container garden. Uh, we got more to do at the end down there. I'm going to be putting in, you know, the seed starting area and the seed starting racks, growth, you know, hardening tables, that kind of stuff. That's all down at the end down there, which I haven't built yet. So I'm going to be working on that soon. I'm going to uh, put a water source down there. So when I get to that area, I'll, I'll have water there that I'll be using, again, hoses to water, you know, hand water with. So it's not a whole lot of sprinkler and piping. So this part of the job is going to be kind of easy. So, well, this is the, uh, the earth garden out here. Um, if you see my uh, Kubota up there at the end of the garden, uh, that's about that's about 110 feet to the end down there. I'm gonna come right down the road here with a trench and I'm gonna run um, branch lines off and I'm gonna rise up these stanchions here. I'm gonna sink these down into the ground so they're about a four foot level. And um, I'll put those stanchions up. I'm gonna have three in this whole garden uh, up about right here all the way down and I'm gonna use the Sinninger 50, 5123 PC heads to irrigate the entire garden, um, you know, from uh, from the impact heads. So the impact sprinkler heads will serve the earth garden, and I'm going to come right on through this little road here and shoot down, and that's where I'm going to irrigate the um, provide irrigation for the uh, trellis garden. So let's take a look at the trellis garden. This is the trellis garden area. I, it's not much to see right now, but it's about a hundred. Uh, it's about 85 feet wide and about 200 feet long all the way down to that woods line down there. I don't know if you can see it, but this is where I'm going to be putting in the, um, the trellises. And the trellises are going to run, you know, east, east to west. That way I have the southern sun will hit, hit them, you know, just right. So 
you know, trellises all the way down here, and I'm going to have about five rows of them. I'm going to have roads in between all of this so I can run the, the Kubota down in and out of these, uh, these trellises. This whole area has been deep tilled. I'm still working the ground. Um, it's ready to go. I just need to um, get the uh, trellises put in place, and then I'll amend the soil inside the, uh, the, the area where the actually trellises. I don't have to amend this entire field, which saves me a lot of time and money. So we'll get this area irrigated for the trellises, and uh, pretty much that'll be the it for the irrigation. And um, we're hoping to do all of this irrigation uh, without a, the aid of a booster pump. We have a four inch well up here and I have 68 PSI and I think about 50 to 55 GPM coming out of that well. So I think I can get this whole place irrigated with that uh, pump as is. Um, I'm not going to be running all the irrigation at one time. I'm going to be doing it in zones. So it won't all be running at once, which is the way I'm going to have to do that, which is no problem. So I'll get, I'll get it all put together. We'll check the GPMs and see what kind of PSI I'm getting out of it. And if I have to, if I'm not getting what I really want, then I can always come back and add a booster pump in and into the main and to jack that pressure back up to uh, serve this area the way I want it served because uh, water in Florida is critical. So let's get, uh, get my brother over here and we'll start getting to work on these trenches and uh, we'll follow along on this project together. We'll see you in a couple weeks.
Well, after a lot of digging and a hard morning, I uh, finally got the first leg of the irrigation hooked in. I'm tied into the existing pump over here in the well house, and I ran my first main out uh, all the way down right through here to uh, have a stopping point here where I can uh, tie in when my brother gets here with the ditch witch, and we'll take off from there. So this was all the hand digging that I had to do, uh, you know, simply to avoid hitting the electrical cables that are underground here. Um, we had a hard time locating any of them. We couldn't really find the one that went to the shop. So I had to dig very, very careful, which and I finally did locate it and um, I avoided it hitting it. So I have the, the, uh, the first part of the main end and the shutoff valve over by the pump house where it's easily accessible. And um, we even have our, um, our uh, the trench covered over, uh, you know, with frequent inspections by Bing Bing and a lot of help with Bing Bing. So me and Bing Bing got the job done this morning. So we'll be back in uh, about a week, week and a half, when my brother gets here. We'll get the um, we'll get the uh, ditch witch out here, and we'll take off from my point where I left off, and we'll run out to the entire garden complex and get that rascal irrigated so we'll be back in about two weeks see you then
Well, after two long weeks of a lot of digging, I mean, a lot of digging, we finally got all the mains put in the ground and they are covered over and we're ready to flush the system. I've got all my valves on all of my nozzles are in the open position and now it's time to flush the system. So I'm gonna open the valve in the well in the pump house and I'm gonna boil the water out of here so I can flush out all the mud and chips of a sawed off PVC and mud and glue and stuff like that. We need to flush it for about 10 or 15 minutes. This head right here is the closest to the pump. So it's gonna have the most pressure because all of the heads are open. So it's hardly, there's so much pressure drop with all the open ends that it takes a while to get it all out. So what we'll do is we'll open the valve at the pump house, let it start flooding the heads and we'll come by in the order starting from the pump and going away from the pump and we'll close each valve as we come to it which increases the, all the pressure downstream until we finally get to the end and we should have it flushed out and at that point then we can start adding heads on here and uh, checking out our coverage so let's go open some valves and see what happens mm -hmm. Okay, this is the main shutoff valve for the entire garden complex. So let's get this one open and let's start flooding some about heads. See how low the pressure is coming out of here? It's because everything is open. So this is the best we got right now, but as we close them, it'll get better. So let's close this one and um, keep moving on down the line. That's the future hookup for our raised beds uh, area out here behind me. Uh, so this is for future. I've got a cutoff valve here and a, 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 and a stubbed off pipe right here so I can come in later and just elbow down and go into a new trench and trench out to my new sprinkler heads that'll serve the raised beds. So this is um, for the future and uh, we look forward to getting the raised beds in, but it won't be today. So let's go check out a couple of more heads. This is a, uh, a nice little setup we got in the irrigation system for the, uh, this is what we call our North Orchard. It's just a single line of uh, fruit trees. We have five in now on the uh, east side and we're gonna put five more in in the future on the west side. So I've got um, this valve. When I open this valve, it'll serve all of these trees at one time. 
and I'm going to use a bubbler. Right now it doesn't have the bubbler in it, it's just an open pipe because I'm flushing the system out. But um, when I put in that bubbler, it'll put out two gallons per minute in a small circular pattern. It'll go directly down to the roots of the tree and it won't get the tree leaves wet. So what, what you're fixing to see is not how it's going to work. It's, I'm just flushing it out and just show you how when I open this valve, how much pressure we get down this line. I like it. So I used to have to hand water every one of those trees by hand every day. And I just love opening a valve a lot better than dragging a hose. So I got one for this side and one for that side. So we're hooked up. Now this is the connection, the future connection water source for our trellis garden, which is going to be hooked up later. So I came up and put the ball valve here under a lot of pressure it's hard to turn on and off but um, this is for future this is uh, I'll come in later and connect to here and go back down and I'll trench out and run to all the trellises so this is a future water supply for the trellis garden and another hose valve right here just in case we need it for anything so I think we got the system flushed I think time to put a, put on a um, a few of the heads and sprinkler heads and let's see what we get. Well, we just finished flushing the system out. Had a good successful flush. There's no leaks anywhere. Uh, looks like we've got some good pressure at the furthest most point, uh, which was a little bit concerning because it's such a long run to that last point. You know, the pressure drop from the pump house all the way to the furthest most head is what counts. So uh, it looked like we had a pretty good um, stream of water out there good pressure and um, you've heard me talking about that uh, Sinninger 5123 PC part circle sprinkler heads and here they are and these things take 10 gallons a minute so if you don't have a lot of pump then you don't want to use these these are agricultural heads and uh, this is a 10 GPM head they they can change the orifice in them and make them even more if you need them but I got the tens let me show you one, show it to you up close. It's got a male thread on the bottom. It's an impact head, so when the water stream hits it, it hits, you know, just like the sprinklers you're used to seeing. Okay, and this little uh, right here, you can lower down and adjust these stops just like you do any other yard sprinkler, and it'll go out to where you want it to go and click and click and click, or you can set it to go further, how far you want it to go. It'll go 108, uh, 360 degrees if you want, but we're gonna hook one up here and show you how one works on one of the turf areas that we just um, put a head on. So that's the, uh, the part circle 5123 Sinninger head. We have this on our on our about page on our um, on our channel. If you want to buy some of these, we got them on our Amazon link uh, at the back of our channel on the about tab. So check it out if you want to get some. Well, it took me about four weeks, but I got the system in and irrigation mains are up and running. I've got the heads on. We're, we're pretty happy about the pressure that we're getting at the furthest most point, which is right here. 
So we've got, uh, got the system up and running and we're happy about that. And I appreciate you joining us on this little journey that we took on putting our irrigation mains in. I got the mains in. I'll have a little bit more detailed um, uh, videos coming out for the watermelon patch, the earth garden, and the container garden. How we uh, did the irrigation in those those three areas of the complex itself, and we've got some new ones coming in the future for the raised beds, which are right here, future raised beds, and the future trellises that are going right over there. So we've got the water in place ready. We just gotta I gotta get the frames built before I run the irrigation. So I got a lot to do. So we're uh, we're on it and we're having fun having the time of our life doing it and i hope you're enjoying the journey with us so if you uh like our channel and you like our videos please subscribe and be a part of our homestead family as me and nancy and bing bing bring this place to life we're looking forward to being 100 percent operational very soon so until we see you next time i always want to say thank you lord for this fantastic well and the pressure and the water everything worked out great we want to thank him for that so until we see you next time thank you lord by his hands we are fed give us lord our daily bread amen have a blessed day Thank you for watching our videos. We love making them. If you like our videos, we ask you to partner with us in our mission by sharing our videos from YouTube and posts from Facebook to all social medias. It really inspires and encourages us. Some great places to share is Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Please like if you like this video, subscribe, click the notification button so you never miss another video. Click below for products we used in the videos and you could also partner with us without spending a penny. We welcome your encouraging comments, prayers and questions. And thank you for watching and sharing our videos and posts. Have a blessed day.